Hi, welcome back. Today we're talking about a very interesting topic. It's an experience that I had many years ago. The name is the weight of the chair. Many, 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 many years ago, I'm probably going back 20, 30 years ago, probably closer to 30 years ago, I had the opportunity uh, to train in martial arts. I spent time throughout my young adult life into my older years uh, in training, uh, working in various stages of uh, jujitsu and karate and so on and so forth. And uh, during that period, I was extremely involved in it. I ran multiple martial arts schools. I sponsored uh, championships. I sponsored tournaments. I sponsored demonstration teams and so on and so on. Traveled all over this great country of the United States. And I was also given a chance to study in Japan. I went to Japan on four different occasions, studying there with uh, one or two particular teachers. And while I was there, uh, it was kind of known amongst my own students, amongst the guys that I worked out with, that the essence of Japanese Shinto religion, the, app, the, uh, the movement of Japanese Zen tradition, uh, is flourishes throughout Japan. Uh, Zen meditation, movements along that way are highly promoted, highly encouraged amongst people who are engaged in the martial programs, martial arts studies. So I was interested even before I went to Japan, from the time I was a young guy, I began meditating uh, way back in the late 1960s. I'm dating myself here a bit, of course, but I had opportunities to study in New York City. I had opportunities to visit monasteries in upstate New York. I attended various workshops at various locations, met several different Zen masters. And when I was in Japan, um, we were sitting in a group. And one of the things that was comfortable, of course, was that the Japanese teacher that was teaching uh, was also uh, fluent in English. I mean, there was some accent, obviously, and other variables, but uh, the English was very clear, very concise. There was no rough edge interpretation or extreme accents uh, that interfered. So we're sitting in a group and the conversation came about, about uh, the weight of a burden, the burden of people that they carry on their back, kind of like a knapsack, kind of like a, a yoke, if you will, you know, which uh, a cow or a bull has around its neck that drags large weights and pulls a plow and so on. I'm sure you understand what I'm referring to when I say the yoke. Uh, certain people talk about the yoke uh, as almost a uh, form of imprisonment for the animal. It serves as a... Um, a tool to control uh, what people would call the beast of burden, a beast of burden. In other words, an animal that has to handle the burden of weight, dragging it around, and uh, depending on, of course, the person that's in control of that, it could be a reasonably okay experience for the animal. Sometimes it can be extremely cruel and brutal. In either case, it points directly to the image of the human phenomena, uh, the suffering within the human being. So we're sitting having a conversation about this. We had just had some lunch. We weren't in a meditation practice at this point. We were just sitting uh, cross-legged underneath a low table. And around the perimeter, though, they had chairs, because not all Westerners and Europeans, and sometimes even Japanese people who have suffered a leg injury or something, who attended the monasteries, uh, they were not able to sit on what is um, called the zafu and the zabutan, which are the pillows or the cushions that you sit on in Zen practice. Uh, they have them similar, very similar style uh, in the dining areas. You sit on the floor, low level, and uh, you eat off with chopsticks and you pass trays of food and, and you have your lunch. And usually after that following up, there's a brief rest period, maybe for an hour. Then outside you go to work, and so on and so on. And anyway, we're sitting there and we're having a conversation and this conversation comes up about the beast of burden, the yoke, the human experience of carrying this weight on our necks, carrying this weight in our hearts, carrying this weight in our minds. So 
I happened to be sitting relatively close to this particular Roshi, the Zen teacher, and he said, could you please stand up? I said, you know, of course, I stood up. And he said, could you pick up one of those folding chairs over there? And I turned around, and there were these metal folding chairs, you know, just like I have here in the States, no different. And uh, I picked one up, and he says, could you please extend your arms and stick it out straight in front of you? And I would like you, uh, Robert, to hold up that chair for the duration of my talk. Now, I'm kind of a young guy. I was in, I thought, pretty good shape. Physically, I was in good shape. I didn't think it would be that difficult. The chair was probably three or four pounds, not much heavier. And I pick up the chair, and I extend it out with my arms. And uh, in about, I don't know, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, uh, the chair became unbearably heavy. It was just, I'm straining and I am straining, I'm sweating, I'm a young guy, I'm wa being watched by all of these other guys in my class there, these other members of the monastery, and they're staring at me saying, don't put that chair down, don't put that chair down. And the, the teacher is still talking away. I'm like, oh my God, there's no way I'm gonna do this. And it got to a point where I had to just lower the chair. I dropped my head down, my hand slapped to my side. I'm saying, I'm sorry, I gave you all I had. I just cannot hold that chair up any longer. And, you know, he smiled at me and said, okay, go sit back down again. And I really, to this day, I know what he was doing. I understand it really clearly now. But at that time, he was just going to keep talking and talking until I finally had to give up. There was no way he was letting that conversation end with me holding that chair up still. So it became very clear that he was setting a tone for something. So he asked me, uh, was it painful? And I said, yeah, I mean, to try to keep holding that chair up. And that chair was light. It wasn't a heavy yoke. It was light. And uh, he said, after a little while, sometimes even the lightest challenges can be very, very heavy, very painful. I said, that's 100%. I said, I'm surprised how heavy it felt in such a short amount of time. And of course, he went on to make the analogy that this struggling, this weight, as it were, this burden, as it were, was representational or a metaphor to the human condition, this condition that we all run around with, and we carry the weight in our chest, in our hearts, in our heads, in our soul, um, that we drag around through life, this kind of weight, and this weight is amplified often throughout our day, and it comes in the form of sorrow, sadness, disappointment, frustration, perhaps there is anger, in some accelerated cases there could be rage, there could be jealousy, there's always some psychological, emotional interference, there's always some kind of an arrow being shot into a heart, and if it doesn't happen today, it's going to happen tomorrow, that whole experience and everyone is nodding their heads recognizing exactly what this Zen teacher was referring to what he was talking about and we all understood it there was no big mystery psychic mystery spiritual mystery in his comments and we said my god you're right I mean it's just the way the condition is and the purpose of Zen training is to help penetrate the illusion of that suffering in other words to shatter this place we have put ourselves in so that rather than living a free, expanded, joyful life, we're running around, in most cases, with struggle. And I'm sure you guys know people who have had great financial wealth, they're very intelligent, they seem to have great lives, and when you sit down with them privately or you sit across a table from them and having coffee or something, they will share their sorrows and their frustrations and, of course, some of their good points too, I'm sure, as you probably, you guys do. But overall, they will say, man, this is tough. You know, I don't know, business is not like it used to be. And the guy is sitting in a palace and he says, yeah, but I used to have two palaces. You know, it's not like it was when I had three palaces. It was better then, not now. You know, there's always this kind of sense of emptiness. There's always something missing. There's always something. So the Zen master comes back and he says to me once again, Robert, could you please stand back up? I'm like, oh, here we go. I mean, now what am I going to do? But, of course, out of respect, I was there as a student to learn. I stood right back up again. And he says, I want you to put your arms out again and hold the chair. So I looked at him politely and I said, okay, that's what you're asking. Then that's what I'm going to do. And sure enough, 
he puts, I put the chair back up and here we go again, three or four or five minutes into the conversation he's having, continuing to chat. And he looks up at me and he can see that I'm really straining. I mean, my neck is bulging. I'm, I'm ready to go. And he says, this time, before you put the chair down, what I want you to do is hand it over to the next person. And the person sitting next to me, some person I didn't know, stood up. And I passed the chair over to that person. And they extended their arms and they began to hold the chair. And I kind of collapsed back into my seat and said, oh, man, this is tough. And the guy next to him uh, was getting ready. And what had happened was the Zen master kept saying, when the weight of your personal struggle gets too much, I want you to share that weight with the person next to you. And you could see people beginning to set up and they were getting ready to receive the chair as it rotated around the room. And at the end of the class time, we kind of got our answer met. And what the Zen master said was, this is the purpose of the Sangha. The Sangha means the community of people that practice the Zen discipline. Now, it's not limited to Zen. It could be just a family. It could be a religious grouping. You could be part of a spiritual grouping. You could be part of a grief grouping. You could be part of a loving, compassionate group that works with special needs kids. It doesn't matter. What he's pointing to is the awesome capacity for the human being to share and offer itself for the benefit of another. This, of course, is compassion. And he said, when you offer your compassion and you choose to help another carry the weight that they bear, there's a term that we use in English for this. And this is the communing, communing process. In the Christian culture, for example, they have a word to take communion, the wafer that is offered during the celebration of the Eucharist at the Mass. The word communion comes from Latin. It means to join with the other, to have unity with each, communion. And the congregation embraces in the communion, not only in the receiving of the wafer, but also in the expression of love, forgiveness, and compassion. And this was the same exact message that the Zen master was sharing. And this is halfway around the world in a completely different culture, and they're preaching and offering the same secrets to helping the human animal, the human being, relieve its suffering. So to finish this beautiful story up, the weight of the chair not only showed me that I can only handle so much on my own, and that was shown to everybody in this room, but it also expressed to everyone sitting that when there is a weight, when there is a burden, we do have a responsibility to carry it as far as we can, to do our best, to fight through it the best we can. But there will come a point where it might be too much. And when it is too much, look to your left, look to your right, and ask for help. All of us need to help each other travel this beautiful journey that is called life itself and that my friends is the secret and the story of the chair a story i learned in japan with the zen master over 30 years ago hey thank you for tuning in